Hey, welcome to the 167. This week, Pastor Jake Reeves is back with us to wrap the move series. Welcome to the 167. Hey, welcome back to the 167. I am here with Pastor Rick George. Good morning to it's, you. And it's sweater wet, sweater weather today. It is sweater weather. Sweater weather. Sweater weather. And the human Eskimo who's wearing short sleeves today, Jake Reeves. But more importantly, I I was told that I was most compared to a spicy chicken sandwich. Yeah, last uh, week. Last Whoa. week. Yeah, we did say that, you know, just the two of us. You remember singing the duo? Just the two of us. Yeah, so we sang that, and um, not that we couldn't do without you, oh, yeah. but we were like the just, plain did. chicken. Yeah. We just didn't have the spicy I chicken. I mean, it was still Chick-fil-A and Popeyes. It's very delicious. Yeah. You yeah. are the like, Wendy's spicy nuggets. Mm. Nobody needs spicy nuggets, <laughs> no. but the fact that they're on the menu it, is... It enhances uh, the With menu. the frosty. Yes. Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Now I'm going to go get a five for five big, biggie bag with some spicy nuggets in it. <laughs> a little junior bacon cheeseburger. All right. So today we uh, wrapped up this week our move series. It's, it is a wrap. Five weeks of it. Yes, it was. So we had our last move group. We did our commitment Sunday. So if you're listening to this and you have not yet made your commitment, you can actually go to the website newlifegardener.com, click on move, and you can actually fill out a digital connect or a digital card if you would like to do a commitment card or stop by the office and we'll be happy to hook you up with one. Yeah, so we encourage everyone to do that. The goal was 100% participation. Uh, I am kind of glad that it's over five weeks of teachings because there are people who just started attending New Life like four weeks ago and they're like, is all you talk about is money? <laughs> you know, it's like, that's all we've heard you talk about is this generosity and making commitments and... Um, but my response it, to that is, we never stop talking about the exciting future. Exactly. Yeah. So, no, we don't always talk about giving, 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 giving. Um, if you look back over the course of 52 weeks, it doesn't consume a lot of our teaching time. But for this five-week period, uh, it was imperative that we do so because yeah. of the vision and the importance of what we have in front of us. So, yeah, we spent five weeks digging deep and issuing challenges. Yeah. And we've been talking about not just giving to a specific thing, but living a generous life, living a life where we're tithing to, go to God, but then living a life of generosity on top of that. So I just want to start off with today. What's something that really stood out to you guys as we're kind of cooking up ideas, we're trying to inspire people to generosity? What is something that, that happened in your life where someone was generous to you and it really stuck out? Yeah. So I can think of like a number of, of opportunities that people took advantage of to be a blessing to me. Uh, going back to when Trudy and I were first married, on our wedding day, there was a man. He was an older guy, family that I'd known for a while, <clears throat> and they like they were just a probably a middle income, maybe even a lower middle in. Like I don't like at that age, I don't really know. You know, when I was nineteen, you never but, know. They got money stashed yeah, in the walls. But they didn't appear to be like a well-off family, but at our wedding, at the reception, he walked by, shook my hand, and there was a hundred dollar bill in there. And I got married at 19 years old, didn't have any money. That just rocked my world. Mm -hmm. It was like, mm -hmm. how incredible, like it was the, the biggest act of generosity I think anyone had ever done for me. And it was a hundred dollars, but I still remember it now, 41 years later, it was still a very impactful uh, moment in my life that helped set the stage for me to want to be generous to other people. Mm -hmm. right? um, so it, I can think of that instance. There was a time when um, I felt God was calling me to something that I wasn't sure what it was. I was unemployed. I had been in ministry, was going back to school. There was a, a, a single lady who, again, did not have an extreme amount of wealth but she blessed our family and brought groceries to our house once a month for us to have food to eat. Mm -hmm. It was an incredible blessing from someone who just cared about us. Um, had someone give me a truck one time. Pretty incredible. Uh, just recently, Trudy and I were at pizza shop eating pizza, 
And someone from our church saw us there. When I went to pay, they said, oh, it's already paid for. It's so it's so disoriented and confusing because you're like, hey, I'm here to pay the bill. And like, it's already been paid. And you start to do that thing where your head's swiveling. You're like, who? Yeah. What? What? And so it's, I've had what seems like a lot. I've had what seems to be a little. Um, but it's mm-hmm. all like reflections of generosity. It, and the amount didn't matter. It was the heart and uh, just the... Um, the sacrifice that was made or that willingness to say, Hey, I want to bless you in this way. So what's really uh, weird about it is I think that I don't, I didn't recognize it for a long time in my life. Um, for me, someone who's very influential in this area from, um, was my mom, my mom's love language is gift giving. And like when you're a kid, you don't really get that. You're just like, my mom is so weird, but it was, it got to the point where even if she didn't have anything, like I'd, I'd come home, do my laundry from college and be get ready to go back. And she'd, you know, fold my laundry. Like, and I'm like, I can do this. And she's like, no, 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 I want to do it. She put it in a laundry basket. And then she would start getting like half eaten bags of chips out of her cabinets. Like she would just ra- like ransack her cabinets and go, what can I put in this bag to send back to college with you? It didn't matter if it was half eaten or yeah. whatever it was, she'd throw it in there. And I didn't recognize it until I was living with a roommate after college. I'd moved back uh, to kind of my hometown and I came home from the grocery store with 10 things of Pringles, like those little canisters of Pringles. And he was like, why did you buy all these? And I had like 10 boxes of fruit rolls. I was like, oh, they were 10 for 10. And he goes, that's not like a contingency part of the deal. That just means they're a dollar a piece. It's what they're, I'm like, I thought you had to buy 10 of them. I just always buy 10. And then I start giving them out to other people. Mm-hmm. And he goes, who, like, how did you even come across that? And at that moment, the doorbell rang and my mom had pulled up in her car and she was like, come to the car. Steaks were, you know, like it, it was like 10 for 10 or whatever. And we go out in her car and she, her trunk is just full with groceries. And she had stopped at my brother's house. And then she was stopping at my house to give out all these things. And like, I looked at my room like, oh, that's why I do that. There it is. Yeah. But she was yep. somebody that whatever was around, she'd just give. Yep. Yeah. Uh, mine's actually, uh, it's a recent move story. Um, so context. Um, so Sarah and I, we do, we do Dave Ramsey. So shout out to Dave Ramsey and I, whoop, whoop. Dave. Like, which honestly I've never like, even since I've managed my own money since like 14, I've never been in debt, never had a car payment. The uh, house mortgage is the only thing I've ever really had on me. And Sarah and I, we've had that forever. And for whatever reason, um, in the last couple of years, every time we try to build up our, um, how I'm see I'm, emergency fund, emergency, emergency fund. fund. Yeah. My brain go. went blank. Um, stuff is just happening and it happened again this year. And, and just in such great measure that for the first time in, you know, almost 20 years of managing things, legitimately, we hit a point where, uh, our daughter had run out of like her breakfast and we didn't have money. Like we did not have money to go buy her breakfast. Now, like we had food, we had spaghetti, you know, but we did not have any money to go to the store. And we're both like, uh, so, you know, during this whole time, we've been readjusting budgets, we've been cutting stuff out, you know, getting rid of all streaming services, just like, all right, how do we, you know, because this stuff keeps coming. And but all of it, you know, because at one point, I came to Sarah, I'm like, I, I don't know what else, like, because we're kind of like you, Pastor Rick, where when we set our uh, our move commitment, Sarah was working like she yeah. was bringing in a couple hundred dollars a month. And so it was a, a lot lower percentage. And then it was like the second we hit move, <laughs> all of that stopped. And so we're not quite at the double tithe, but it was but, almost it was like, yeah, and it was an unintentional. It double was. <laughs> and so I went to Sarah, I'm like, I like I don't know if we're supposed to like lower this. And Sarah's like. Uh, no, we don't do that. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. Um, well, the voice of God a lot of times sounds like your wife. Uh, but anyway, so we got stuff figured out. We made it through. And so like we restructured and, and all this and we're just hanging on tight. But we shared that in our move group just as a way of saying like we understand things are hard, but we made this commitment to God. And so we're hanging on that. We're, it's everywhere else that we're looking for Let's see what happens. Um, And in no way, shape, or form looking for it, somebody in our move group, they went home and they prayed about it and um, they came back and they paid off one of our medical bills that we had. That was just, it was 
you know, we had to put it on, it was just hanging overs that we couldn't yeah, pay. And, awesome. and so like to be able to do that, we're now like when I'm structuring my budget, I'm like, okay, there's that little breathing room mm -hmm. and I can start more of that uh, debt snowball and some of those other medical debts and everything uh, that, that kind of came up in the last year. It's, it's awesome. So that, that's been a huge, huge yeah. blessing that I did not expect in the slightest way. I mean, God yeah. has never, never abandoned me, even when I have to manage my own stuff. I thought you were so. going to say they brought you over a box of Cheerios. No. <laughs> Here's some cereal for you. No, I got no. you Penny some breakfast. <laughs> no, she, she, she survived. It was... Yeah. Well, no, that's awesome. Man. <laughs> that is awesome. And I wanted to touch on that because you brought this up in uh, your message this week, which was about our circumstances, mm -hmm. you know, where it's like, you know, we're, we've all been in that season where it's like, oh, things are tight. You know, it's like, we don't know how we're going to get through it. And a lot of times we don't have that reaction like Sarah goes, where it's like, no, we're going to stick with this. It's people are like, no, I can't tie No, I can't do yeah. this. That's the first place they pull from. Yeah. That's the first <laughs> place you cut instead yeah. of your streaming services. And so, um, we're in that circumstances, but you even challenged us to go ahead of that because you said something I was like, oh my gosh, that is true. Where you said, uh, you talked about forecasting our generosity and you said, um, it's not just enough, um, that we have bad circumstances, but when our circumstances change, we go, well, my circumstances change now, but it could take another turn yeah. here in a couple in a month or two. Yeah. So I'm still not gonna, you know, to give for that blessing or do that. Tell me a little bit about how can we, um, escape that trap of, you know, once our circumstances change, we're still holding on really tight because we've known what it's been like to be in that season. Right. So uh, scripture uh, never indicates that we should just live uh, lives foolishly and not make plans or have an idea of what's coming. So that is not what I'm suggesting. Um, what I was suggesting and proposing to everyone to consider is to listen to the voice of God, be obedient to whatever you're feeling that He's asking you to do. You walk in that with the confidence that He will provide, not the fear of what might happen sometime in the future. But that's the typical way that most of us live. We forecast, we listen to the news. Mm -hmm. uh, so right now, uh, it is, man, I don't know if I can make this commitment. I'd love to, but... You know, there's, I keep hearing things about a recession, and I keep hearing things about, you know, this collapse of an economic system and all this. Layoffs. And they might be laying off. At the, and so if they came we, in on a Bitcoin high, then yeah, like and right so, now yeah. is tough. FTX. Yeah. yeah. And so <laughs> uh, decisions are made not based on what I currently have or can do. It's man, I'm looking out and it makes me a little nervous. And so we make commitments based out of fear, mm. not from faith. And that falls into the walking by sight and not by faith. And it's contrary to what God is asking us to do, which is to trust Him and that He will provide. Um, you go back several years when we uh, launched the initiative to build our current facility, uh, it was in a time of financial uncertainty as well, and we felt like it's what God asked us to do, so we stepped into that, and our church family was um, was incredible and did not, for the most part, I'm sure there were some, but for the most part, uh, did not allow the future to, di to dictate what the present was going to be like for them. Mm. So that's kind of what I was referring to, that... Yeah. Uh, you can't look at what might be down the road and then say, well, I can't be generous because I want to make sure I have all I need for then. Yeah. Well, and you touched on something, which is a Dave Ramsey thing, which is having the emergency fund. Yeah, absolutely. Which I think, can you talk to, talk to people a little bit about that? Like, what is that to kind of, you know, if you're if you're fearful about the future, like <laughs> yeah. what, what is the way that you're breaking that down to plan for that? So, so Dave... Dave, as I Dave, you know, my, me, buddy me, Dave. my buddy Dave, D, Big D, as I call him. Uh, so <laughs> he he wants you to start off with a thousand dollars. Now it doesn't mean that thousand dollars comes out of thin air. You have to uh, intentionally set that money aside, and that's coming from, uh, you know, building your budget. And obviously, this is all st stuff covered in financial peace, where they talk about where you focus. Like if you have a lot of debt and you have a lot of different places money needs to go, he gives you really clear things to start on. 
But when you have that thousand dollars, because that's that's the thing that I am grateful for is I'm not in credit card debt <laughs> because right. of any of this, because it's all it's all cash. It's all, you know, and Dave even talks about medical and uh, mortgage and everything. But having that thousand dollars for when uh, which and eventually uh, which we've had in the past. It's just it gets whittled away sometimes. Um, that three to six months, depending on what you need to live, if you get if you're unemployed or, or something. And because when um, your heater goes down or you need new tires on the car, because like not because of normal wear and tear, but because something happened, right. then all of a sudden it's not like oh no, I could never see this coming. It's like okay, I, I've been preparing for this, you know, and now it's not going to completely devastate me to, to right. all in. So it, it's still terrible. Like, oh, I got to spend this money. It does not <laughs> feel good. No, but, but you're not in debt and you're not buried with it. Exactly. And yeah, absolutely. Because I guarantee you the feeling of watching your emergency fund disappear versus going in credit card debt or something that has crazy interest they're vastly different oh, feelings very so much very very different yeah. and you're talking about you know a three thousand dollar hit to your emergency fund yeah. versus if you took a three thousand dollar credit card that's going to end up being oh, four thousand yeah. and it's going to be you're going to yep. lose a bunch of money yep. but i think that those are such pivotal you know concepts of us you know like being able to feel secure for the future and saying mm -hmm. hey it's okay we have the emergency fund you know, we're, we're building that up, but you, like you said, you got to build that up slowly. Yep. Like in the good season, you got to yep. put money in that. And sometimes I'm, I'll say, which I didn't, wasn't intending to, but sometimes you have to ask for help, <laughs> you know, yeah. whether it's with budgeting or uh, legitimately, I know there are people yeah. that legitimately need uh, financial assistance. I think one of the awesome ones from the first time through move when we kicked off was the downs. Mm. Uh, they yep. came in, got financial assistance. It turned some things around for them. And uh, it changed their life. Changed and their it, life, yeah. and now they're doing awesome. Now they're, yeah. Um, I think that you know some of those things just is a mindset thing. You know, escaping. You know, like I said, it's like when you talked about viewing this as a privilege or an opportunity, mm -hmm. uh, rather than uh, viewing it as something that's an obligation. I think you know that's going to be huge for people. But you also challenged us um, in a way to strategically give beyond our ability. And I think it goes again to these kind of points where it's like, okay, so how do I, if I'm strapped, if I don't have an emergency fund, whatever, how do I, as a, um, a member of the community, how do I give beyond my ability? Do I just run up my credit cards for the church? <laughs> like, I, you know, like, yes, oh, sweet, oh, sweetheart, please. we're going to mortgage the house and drain the savings and just <laughs> God's going to provide. Uh, no. <laughs> um, so I echo what Jake is saying. And uh, if you are not, currently uh, living on a working budget, mm -hmm. like that needs to be the starting point. Mm -hmm. Just meaning we sit down, have some honest conversations about where we are financially. Several weeks ago, I mentioned uh, this idea about our value system and the flow of money. It's just a reflection of the things that we value. Just be honest about that. Sit down. If you're married with your spouse, if you're single, sit down, look over where you are. Say, these are the things that are important to me. And then literally budget them out. Set money aside on a spreadsheet that says, this is where my money is going to go. So you have to be proactive in that. Most people are reactive when it comes to finances. Yeah. They just, they get paid, they go spend money. Where'd at the it end, go? At the end of the month, <laughs> they're like, man, where did our money go? I don't know. What'd you buy? And, and we're clueless. Instead of being able to look and say, we know exactly where our money went. So it begins with just a strategic approach to assessing where you are, making plans for your money to go to very specific things. You might determine at the end of that, we don't have enough money to do all the things that <laughs> right. we want to do. Yeah. <laughs> all right? And it's not rocket science. You either have to spend less or you have to make more. Yeah. Right? It's not that complicated. Okay. So, but you lay it all out and you're like, okay, this is this is how we want to live. And then move comes along in the step of faith. And Pastor Rick gets up and says, I'm challenging you to be generous. And you're like, okay, we've already planned. We're going to, we've been tithing. Like we've been setting money aside right off the top to go here. But we do want to be generous. But I don't know where it's going to come. 
Like where it's going to come from? Uh, well, how can we give beyond our ability? Garage sales, a second job, odd things here and there. Um, saying, you know, instead of um, using all of my Christmas money that I always get, a couple hundred bucks for Christmas every year I get from family, I'm just going to seed that back into the ministry. I mean, there are ways that we can physically give beyond what we currently have the ability to give. Those are ways to do that. Sell something that I have. Use that for something that I want to participate in. Another way to give beyond our ability to give is to give what we can and then trust God to multiply that mm -hmm. and to say, God, this is this is my gift, and I give it joyfully, and I'm asking you to take it and supernaturally make it into more than I can possibly give. Well, I love the that concept of multiplication because it's... I think there's a difference between you giving something and taking other people with you. Um, I think about, I think we did this here. I can't remember how many years ago we did it, but like, get, you know, we gave some people some money in, in the service. Mm -hmm. But like, if you say like, Hey, look, I got a hundred bucks that I can be generous with. But if you go to your work and you say, Hey, listen, everybody, I brought a hundred bucks. What if we all chipped in a hundred bucks and then we picked somebody to, to go blessed or like we picked a charity or whatever. And if you get like your friends to match it, now all of a sudden your generosity has not, it's not a hundred dollars. It's you, it stirred up, you know, a thousand dollars, you know, like mm -hmm. you stirred up a, a bunch more money just because, I mean, you still put in a hundred dollars, but you rallied other people to go with you and it's a bigger impact. Yeah. Um, you know, Trudy did that a while back. There was, um, someone in her life, a friend, um, that had a circumstance came up and uh, it threw a wrench into some of their plans. And it wasn't like devastating, but it was a wrench in their plans. And so Trudy, because she loves this person and there are some other people who love them as well, like she went and said, hey, would you like to partner with me and be a blessing to this person? And they, they were able to bless them with something that they just wanted. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like we have to have this or we're going to starve. It was just, man, we'd really planned to do this and have this and and then the circumstance. And But people who loved them just said, hey, we can all partner together and be a big blessing to you. Yeah. So, yeah, it, there's a multitude of ways that you can uh, give beyond your ability to give in the moment. Well, you just have to be willing to think outside the box and to step out in faith. Yeah, even something as simple, I remember uh, somebody was talking to me about, they were like, yeah, we want to be generous. And so what they did is they took their money, which is sitting in a savings account anyway, they put it in like a two-year CD, and they just said, whatever interest we get off that, that's like they scrape that off the top every year, and they go, that's what we donate. And so it's just like, you know, they're, you know, they're just not compounding the interest in their own For account. For themselves, yeah. They're, yeah. Taking, they're still putting money in that account, but they're like, oh, sure. yeah. We've got, you know, whatever, 10000 in in a savings account. We took 5000 put it in a two-year CD, and then whatever interest that's off, we scrape that off, and then we still have access to whatever. Yep. Like, you can make your money work for you, but it's the same thing. It's like, how do you create an intentional plan yep. for generosity? Yeah, and it might be a little, might be a lot, doesn't matter. It's I'm giving even beyond what I think I can give, and it might be, you know, a few bucks of interest. Yeah. It, could be something even more significant. Um, I had this conversation with one of the uh, college students that interns <laughs> at uh, the church, which uh, one of her statements was, I'm way more poor in college than I thought I would be. <laughs> you know? Yes. Which, to, yes, to her you credit, are. She's, she's trying to not go in debt for it. She's trying to pay off classes and everything. So yeah. that's amazing. And she's like, I think I need to low again. I think I need to lower my number. Um, and she's like, I'm still giving, but I just don't think I can hit that number. I'm like, how short are you going to be? And she's like, well, and I, she didn't give me exact, but she's like, you know, I'm like a couple hundred. And she's like, yeah, a few hundred. And I'm like, that's pizza. You know, I'm, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> leave the number, you know, give what you can, you know, each time and then look for those other ways. God may come because she also said, uh, she's like, well, you know, I might be getting like Christmas money or I'm like, that's, that's perfect. You know, like, uh, it, yeah. but you know, for her, it's literally, 
fifty dollars to hundreds of dollars, where other people it's tens of thousands. And uh, but what that but, does, um, as you take that step of faith and you're trusting God, it it causes you to open your eyes to other ways in which God might be yeah, yeah. providing, mm-hmm. and you start looking for things that you would have otherwise just completely been oblivious to. Yeah. So I want to give you the last five minutes here of the podcast and tell us because. I really truly believe that what she said on Sunday morning, that basically we have an opportunity to give, that God gives us opportunities. It's a privilege for us. Tell me about if people are making a pledge to move, what is it that we're having a privilege to partner with? Is this a preaching five minutes or a real five minutes? Uh, It's it's a real... A preaching five minutes can (laughs) be 15. Now it's four minutes and 45 seconds. Sorry, go ahead, Pastor. Uh, So yeah, you can look at this opportunity as, oh man, it's just, they're just trying to get more money. And it, it could seem like a burden, or you can view it as, I have the opportunity to invest in something incredible. And so when I began to prepare these five weeks, I looked at it for myself as an opportunity to invite our entire church family into this partnership with hundreds and hundreds of other families, along with the working of the Holy Spirit, to accomplish something great in the city of Gardner to build the kingdom of God. And so the invitation to be generous is based on an understanding of both the blessing that comes from being generous and the impact that generosity has in the lives of the people who you're being generous to. Uh, So to make a financial commitment to the MOVE campaign is going to both be a blessing to you as you're giving, but it is literally going to change the lives of hundreds and thousands of people. There will be people who come to Christ, are baptized, and their lives are forever changed because someone gave $5,000 over the course of a year. And you're like, seriously? Yes, Mm -hmm. seriously. Like, it's multiplied and altogether accomplishes something incredible. So this is not your pastor begging you to give something so we can build a building. It's your pastor saying to you, I'm inviting you to take advantage of an opportunity that God has laid before you to take a step of faith, to live a life of generosity, to receive the blessing that comes from that, and to know that you are changing the eternal destiny and leaving a legacy for people to enjoy well after you are gone. So it is an invitation to step into something incredible, not a urging and a begging to do something reluctantly that you do not want to do. Yeah. And if you guys want to participate in that with us, like I said at the beginning, uh, you go to newlifegardener.com. There you can find information about all of our ministries and what that money goes to. Um, But if you go to slash move... You can go to Slash Move, or you can actually go to MoveGardener.com. Ooh. It'll take you right there. MoveGardener.com. Uh, but, but on the homepage of New Life Gardener 2, all the, just scroll down. It's right there. Yep. It'll yep. tell you all about what we got planned, what's going forward, and right there there's a commitment card that you can fill out uh, that says, hey, I want to commit for one year to give this. Um, you can do the math there on that, or like I said, stop by the office, visit us on Sunday, we'll find you a card, and you get you know, take that opportunity to be with us in this. Yeah, even if you don't attend in person, if you just watch the podcast, if you watch online and participate, it's an opportunity for you to invest in the work of God that's blessing you and know that this is doing something incredible. You might say it's time to take a risk. It's time to take a step of faith. It's time to move. move. I'm shaking my head over here, but yes, amen. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks for joining us here in the 167. We'll see you guys here next week. Hey, welcome back to 7 Minute Stories. I am here with the Lisa Sherman. Hi. Congregation member, jazzercise extraordinaire. (laughs) What else do you do? Um, I work for Examinetics. Examinetics? Yes. That seems like a combination of words that mean something that I don't know what it means. It's a pretty big deal. All right, I guess so. I'll take your word not for really. it. Not really. I schedule audio testing. It's not that big of a deal. <laughs> hey, it's a big deal for those that go in. Like yeah. somebody that takes their daughter to in for uh, audio exams. Like yeah. It's a big deal. It's kind of like that. So. All right. Well, today 
we're going to talk about your seven minute story and just talk about where what God's moving in your life. Okay. All right. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about like what was your experience like growing up with Christianity? Did you grow up in a Christian home or? Um, I did. I um, my parents were married for the well majority of my life till I was about eleven, and then they got divorced. But um, we used to go to full faith church up in Shawnee, and I even started elementary school there, and we were, like, in all the plays and everything, that the big Easter plays that they have up there. So I did. I grew up in church, and we had a core group of church family up there that we still talk to all the time. So, so. it still kind of stayed your community, your family growing up. Yes, they are still my family till That's this good. day. Yeah. So tell me a little bit what happened after that. You said, like, how long were you at full faith? So we were at full faith until, um, I think I, I, I only went to, like, until second grade. And then um, my parents, they wanted to move out to Paola. They had a body shop in Johnson County, and um, they were there for a while. That Let that go. And so um, then I started to go to school in Paola, which is where um, I was raised. And so, I mean... Just a pretty normal childhood at that point until my parents got divorced and then everything changed. What happened after that? So after that, um, my mom moved into town. My dad got remarried. So it was kind of like a, always a, a battle of where am I going to go, who am I going to live with, you know, sharing custody, stuff like that. So it was pretty rough. Yeah. And that was like my teenage years too, which wasn't good. <laughs> and did you meet uh, Mike, your husband, in the teenage years or was it college or after? It was about middle school years. We went to school together. so High school sweethearts. Yeah. And then, and you have two boys now. How old are they? Mm -hmm. So um, Jordan's 13 and Aiden is 15. And your daughter? And she's 21. 21. Yeah. So they're all doing great. That's great. Yeah. So a couple of things happened uh, during that time that we've talked about um, in your teenage years. And then recently God's kind of been moving in your life in that. Do you want to tell, tell us a little bit about what, what's been happening recently and then how that related to what happened to you? Sure. So um, recently I, I was called in to do a prayer session, which... I didn't really think that I needed or I didn't even think was about me. You thought you were dropping off your husband, right? Yeah, I, th well, I thought I was just dropping off Mike, and I'm like, yeah, go get some Jesus. You need it, you know? Mm -hmm. So turns out I actually needed that. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, yeah, so I did a prayer session, and it was like an hour and a half of um, just unraveling of my life and just past hurts that I've had that I've never dealt with, and... I'm really good at just pushing trauma deep down and just like going forward, surviving. And so um, I was able to have all that um, confronted and deal, you know, tried to deal with all of that and cry through it and didn't realize how scarred I was and how much I think it, it affected even my faith. You know, I just mm -hmm. feel like when you hold on to stuff like that, it, it, what effects do you feel like it has on your faith when people hold on to unforgiveness or um, they do that, they just push their emotions down and don't deal with it? I, I just think that it, it blocks your view. You know, like once you forgive and let go, it's like you have a new lens, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I felt like I just, I didn't think that it was there, but after that prayer session, I just, I felt lighter. I felt like just I could just take a big breath of air and, and I didn't have all that garbage mm -hmm. on my shoulders anymore, you know? Yeah. And you've had, what were some of the key components for that? Um, like you've, um, you talked about unforgiveness. Was there anger? Like what were some of the key things you think that you were hanging on to that if the people are listening now that you would encourage them to let go of as well? Yeah. I mean, um, so my dad, he took his life, and um, I, I love my dad so much that I always was just like, well, of course I forgive him, you know? Mm -hmm. But I don't think I ever actually sat down and went through that evening again and thought about all of that again 
um, I didn't even realize that maybe, maybe I was angry at him for leaving us. And, um, I just felt like I loved him so much. I couldn't be mad at him. Like I had to understand. Um, so I think I held on to that hurt, um, from that event and I don't know. I just feel like a lot of people have a view on suicide that isn't always accurate. And I needed to hear what you had to say about, you know, one decision doesn't affect your whole destiny. So that, I think that was like, I mean, I literally have dealt with that ever since that day. Like, could he be in heaven? Could he, you know, I have to see him again. I have to see him again. I'm going to see him again. Mm. So it was really good to work through that. And then my brother was killed. Um, and he was only two years um, apart from me. So that I was 17 and he was 19. So that was huge, huge mess and huge hurt. Again, you just, life goes on and you don't realize that you haven't dealt with any of that. What was interesting because you sat down and we said, I'm like, what are we here to pray for you for? I always kind of ask that question to see what people say. And you're like, I'm good. And then like you casually dropped those two things. And I was like, oh, Lisa, <laughs> like, let's, do you want to talk about that? You're like, not really. And I was like, well, we're gonna. <laughs> like, I'm like, I don't, I don't think I need it. <laughs> yeah. But I did. And you did great. Like it was, I felt like you had a real, just a great release. Like I said, I felt like that was, it was real forgiveness. It was, felt like it was. Um, like I said, something that you kind of needed because like when we started talking about it, you just, you were so brave and you, um, and you're even brave to come in and talk about it now. Like I said, you were just very open about it and honest about how you felt about it. So, yeah, I just feel like if you have to be willing, you know, you're, Mm -hmm. if you're not willing, then it's hard to see what God can do. Yeah. So I was willing to go in and get that prayer session, which again, I was like, I don't know why I'm here, but okay. Yeah. And then just that willingness brought on all that release and forgiveness and I could just move forward in a different way. And then like this, like just big things. Yeah. I was super nervous about this, but I have to be willing and yeah. God does all the work. Absolutely. And is there been something significant like since then? Um, in your relationship with God or your marriage, like, like since then, what's been different? Well, I mean, I think the biggest thing since then is being an example. So my daughter recently would have probably never have done it as well, Mm -hmm. but you know, she could hear my story and she could kind of see what the benefit was of that and so she actually came in and had a prayer session and it just it literally changed her life that's awesome i mean and just being just maybe if it's just that one person Mm -hmm. i mean of course that's my daughter so that's the best but yeah but leading by example and that's what our testimony is it's telling like my uh i've had a professor used to say that your testimony is just one beggar telling another beggar where to find bread right it's just, hey, this worked for me. Yeah. You should come in and have it. Right. And just to know that you don't have to you don't have to sit there with all that hurt and all that pain and and I mean, there is there's relief from it. Mm-hmm. You do have to seek it, but it's incredible when you find it. Yeah. Jesus Christ, he died so that we can be free and we can live our abundant life. So Right. He already paid the price, so That's good. Well, thanks for coming in and um just sharing that story with us and I hope that inspires other people and if you're listening to this uh, that like what you did for your daughter now you're going to do for other people right I hope so All right. well thanks for joining us for 7 Minute Stories we'll see you next time if you enjoyed this episode of the 167 make sure you like subscribe follow get notified leave a 5 star rating and a positive review tell all your friends to listen as well make sure you go over to New Life gardener.com and check out all that we have to offer as a church and check out our messages online as well. Thanks for listening.